struggle I know Yes, I Sing that song again Serving a God of miracles I know Yes, I know I'm serving a God of miracles I know Yes, I know from your heart you woke up this morning to pray because God is a prayer answering God you're going to declare and decree you have talked to God you praised him it's time to speak to your mountain you will say in the name of Jesus every power assigned to me to hand me over to my enemy expire in the name of Jesus every power assigned to me to hand me over to my enemy Expire right now. Pray that prayer. Add power to it. Make it loud. Speak with authority. What kind of man is this? Where did he get his power and his authority? Speak with boldness. Don't suggest. Don't be intimidated. Don't be timid. Speak with boldness. Command the powers. Assign to hand you over to your enemy to expire right now. Let all the altars catch fire right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You don't have time. Break it. Every power assigned to hand me over to my adversary. To hand me over to sickness. To hand me over to affliction. Expire now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. You are doing well, but I want you to pray by faith. Pray like you are not going to repeat the prayer. You are just going to repeat giving no thanks. I want you to declare say, in the name of Jesus. Now you are not talking to God. You are addressing issues. Say in the name of Jesus. If you need to change your seat, change your seat. Say in the name of Jesus. Every cycle of hardship in my bloodline. Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Now you may pretend. You may look straight. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you use your authority. Authority is useless when it's not exercised. In the name of Jesus, every hardship in my bloodline, the things my father struggled with, the things my mother struggled with, in the name of Jesus, it will not work in my life. I'm not a candidate for hardship. I know the grace of God. After Jesus became poor, that for my sake I may become very rich. There are many rest for the people of God. I enter into the rest of God. I command every hardship to be broken in my life, to be destroyed in my bloodline. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Now I command in the name of Jesus every limiter to be limited. In the name of Jesus. Every prayer I prayed yesterday and I've prayed to God, may God answer us from the secret place of thunder. May God help us. In the name of Jesus. You are going to declare, say in the name of Jesus. 
Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. Can you say that again? Uh huh. You're going to declare if you're a man, if you're a woman, you say, like father, like son, yoke be destroyed. My, like father, like son, yoke in my life. With the intent to destroy my destiny, be destroyed right now. You may now listen to me. You may think that prayer, listen to me, you may think that prayer is simple. But if you are honest with yourself, you will see yoke. At the particular age that you are, you see things that happen to your father trying to happen to you. You're going to take authority right now. You see in the name of Jesus? Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. Yoke in my life with the intent to destroy my destiny. Be destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus. Mention that thing and begin to shout, be destroyed. Use your authority. You shall decree a thing and the thing shall be established. Destroy it. Don't wait for it to manifest. Destroy it. Every yoke. Yoke guarantees direction. That thing leading me to poverty be destroyed. That thing leading me to destruction be destroyed. That thing that wants to limit my life be destroyed. I come up a little bit, I go down again. Be destroyed. That yoke be destroyed in my life. If you don't see the light of day, I'm not your candidate. Marabaka sata rababa. Shetere bobobo. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The next prayer, you're going to pray three times. Listen, Jabez was honorable. He had chief testes title, had position, but he was not really blessed indeed. Everybody envied him, but he knew. Now, there's a problem in the 21st century. It's called discontentment. God can never satisfy some people. It's a great gain when you have righteous contentment. I'm not talking about you if you're like that. I'm talking about the fact that everybody envies you, but you know you go back to a problem. There are things you are covering up. You are going to pray in the name of Jesus. Every secret yoke that the devil has placed in my life, in the name of Jesus, I command you, expire now. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer, any secret thing. If something is on your face, you address it. If you can cover it with cloth, you, you manage it. No! In the name of Jesus, whoever the Son has set free is free indeed. Declare that I'm free indeed. Declare that I'm free indeed. In the name of Jesus, any secret thing in my life be destroyed. Everything that the Lord has not done, the Lord has not planted, be destroyed right now. In Jesus, precious name we pray it. You're going to pray that prayer again. Come on, go ahead and pray that prayer again. Now that you're praying it the second time, pray with more intensity. Allow the Holy Ghost to lead your right. Receive all trans. Begin to destroy things in the spirit. In Jesus, precious thing we prayed. I want you to pray that prayer the third time. Go ahead and pray it in the name of Jesus. Every secret yoke that the devil has placed in my life, in the name of Jesus, I command you now expire. Pray that prayer. Pray with intensity. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The prayer you're going to pray now, I want you to mention your name. And you'll command your life to prosper. Listen to me. People attend the big gathering and just get lost in the middle. But this morning, we come to address issues concerning you. 
It's possible you didn't budget to come here this morning. Maybe a friend dragged you here. Something will change your life if you apply faith to it. In the name of Jesus. Now mention your name. Now tell yourself, begin to prosper. The Bible says, and the man Isaac began to prosper. Come on, pray that prayer. Begin to prosper. Now begin to address everything the enemy puts in your, the, the Holy Ghost puts in your heart. Stagnation, I destroy you. That lack of excitement in the place of prayer, in the place of work, I destroy you. That discouragement, I destroy you. That voice that says, kill, my, kill yourself, I destroy you. Begin to prosper. Beyond begin to prosper. Command it. Command yourself. Command the other. Command your destiny. Begin to prosper. In Jesus, precious name we pray. You're going to shout, Oh God. In the name of Jesus, do a new thing in my life. Can you make it louder? Aha. Yes. Can you make it louder? Yeah. Yeah. Do a new thing. Go ahead and pray that prayer. As the year rounds off, oh God, do a new thing in my life. Do a new thing in my life. Crown this year for me with goodness. Let my path drop fatness. Let it drip fatness. In the name of Jesus, let me stand out. I will not be ashamed this year. This year will not end like last year. Do a new thing in my life, oh God. If you meet the earth in six days, seven days, Lord, there are more than seven days. Do a new thing in my life. You've been doing great things. Do greater things. In the name of Jesus. Let people know that I serve a living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. In the name of Jesus, let new things locate you. Let everything the enemy has been doing in your life expire right now. Let the new chapter be open for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Congratulate three people around you. Tell them something new has started in your life. Be seated. God bless you. Love you right back. Love you right back. If you're not built up, inheritance cannot be given to you. This has nothing to do with coming to church, uh, uh, having position in church. Even though we know that you'll be built up as you come to church, as you are given responsibilities, you become responsible. We know that. But those things don't mature you. What matures you is what we want to talk about this morning. But first of all, know that you can enter into all the things that God has planned for you if you're not built up. The Bible says in the Amplified Version of Galatians 4.1, Amplified. Now, what I mean is that as long, you see, you determine it. As long as the inheritor, that guy is an inheritor, but... All things are his, but he needs to grow up. As long as the inheritor is a child and is underage, he does not differ. The things he enjoys, the things he walks in, he does not differ from a slave. Although legally, he owns everything. He's the master of all the estates. You will not be cheated. The enemy will not cheat you. So if you are the devil, what will you do? He can't stop God from giving you things because he has given you all things. He can't stop God because he knows that God is not a liar. But he can stop you from growing. Because he knows that as long as it keeps you not mature, you will just be a theoretical victor. You will not enjoy those things that God has made available to you. There are things that Christ died for. In 1 Peter chapter Chapter 1, verse, let's read from verse 9. First Peter, Papa says, receiving the end of your faith, that is, 
the salvation of your souls. End does not mean that faith ends. The morale behind your faith, the morale behind your coming to church, the end, the reason for your being born again, receiving it, how do you receive it? In verse 10, the Bible says, of this salvation, the prophets in, have inquired and they searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that should come to you. The Bible says in verse 11, search in what manner, search in what or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating. Those guys didn't understand. Isaiah, Jeremiah, they were just speaking. In Psalm 110, David said, the Lord said to my Lord, he didn't fully understand. The Lord said to my Lord, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord's Lord? He didn't fully understand. Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. They understood a part of it, but they didn't fully understand. The Bible says in 1 Peter that I was reading to you, such in what or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. Look at this. And the glories, glories that would follow. In other words, when Christ was dying on the cross, he had options to come down. The Bible says he could call down legions of angels, but he thought of the glories that would follow. How do you think Christ will be happy? If you, you and I are only embracing his suffering, we don't enjoy the glories that would follow. Christ died so that the glories that he had in mind on the cross, Bible says for the joy he saw ahead, he endured the suffering of the cross. That joy, many Christians are not enjoying it, they're not walking in it because it takes maturity to enter into what Christ has obtained for us. That's the reason why we have pastors. That's the reason we have apostles. It's not to direct attention to ourselves. In Ephesians 4, verse 11, Ephesians 4, 11, he himself, the Bible says, gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. Why? For the keeping of the saints, for the work of ministry. Edifying means building, oikodobio. It means to build up the body of Christ. If you read verse 16, because I don't have time to read to verse 16, the Bible says, to whom the whole body joined, Knit together. You see? How can one body be a child's hand? And the other hand is the mature hand. Everybody must grow. The Bible says every joint supplies according to the effective working, which every part does its share, causing what? Growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. So God wants you to be built up after you are saved. So now, some people think attending programs is building up. Some people think when they embrace a doctrine is being built up. No. Some people think when I please pastor, I, I have to please him, is to be built up. No. If you look at the Acts 20, 32, now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. That thing has ability to build you up. There are Christians who say, I just come to church, I don't, not be maker Jesus. And they limit what they could do with the life they've received. That's the reason why a lot of Christians, there are many churches, but a lot of Christians are walking and living from defeat to defeat. There are ministries that when you get to heaven, you realize that they were not validated. How can a Christian be coming for deliverance clinic every Wednesday? Christians that, this sign, the Bible says, shall follow those who believe, not pastors. In my name, they will cast out devil. They're now casting devil in you, not once, every Wednesday. Now you think maybe I'm attacking another church because we don't operate like that. No, I'm telling you the truth. God brought us to equip you so that you will start supplying. To be built up is the destiny of a Christian. You will not enjoy every single thing you were told when you give your life to Christ if you're not built up. If you notice Acts 20, 32, now I commend you to God 
and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Whatever God had in mind before he brought you to the body of Christ, the reason why you didn't live in the days of Samson, the reason why he saved the best for last and he preserved you for 2023, the reason why he kept you, you shall walk in it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy will not rob you of your inheritance. Amen. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In Ephesians 2, 20, I want to read from 20 to 22. Bible says, I haven't been built on the foundation. You see? I wish I could read from 19. Let's read from 19. Now, therefore, you are no, no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having built, been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, so your pastors have, uh, now your pastors don't guarantee that you'll go to heaven. Jesus does that. But how you get there, whether rich or poor, the church you attend will guarantee that. What you are listening to will guarantee that. Because the word of his grace is able to build you up and hand over an inheritance to you. What did you budget for? Nobody works for inheritance. It was given to them. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will walk in something strange today. Amen. Something that you will know you didn't work for. Just by be, being built up. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will walk in a new dimension today. Amen. Bible says, be, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, 21, in whom the whole building, can you see? The body of Christ is a building. The whole building, being fitted together, grows into the holy temple of, in the Lord. Verse 22, in whom you are also being built. How? together for dwelling for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Can you imagine God dwelling in a place without a roof? <laughs> Just a pillar. Just one thing. You can't roof a pillar. You have to have different dimension. That's why if you are here today, you think you pray and you are not nice. You are not kind. I just pray. I'm morally sound and you are cocky. Because of that. No. Pillar. 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 And you know how God is faithful? He will make you be in meetings like this. Because you are built based on what God uses the apostles and the prophets to build in your Jesus being the chief cornerstone. That's why the Bible says, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Why? You are God's building. You, you are not completed building. God needs to still be working on you. I pray in the name of Jesus you shall be clean by his words. Amen. In John 17, 17, he says in John 17, 17, sanctify them by what? Your truth. What is the truth? Your word is the truth. John 15, verse 3, now that I've spoken to you, you are clean. The word of God has a cleansing ability. So when you are born again, you don't do anything. It's like crossing the Red Sea. Moses divided the Red Sea and the children of Israel passed over. But to enter the promised land, you need to cross Jordan. Jordan didn't open before they stepped in. They stepped in into the middle. The wonders of the Lord are for those who go into deep waters. Therefore, I want you to make up your mind that you bury yourself in the Word. You begin to walk on yourself. If what happened to you this year when it happened last year, you behaved the same way, uh, what, the same way you behaved last year is the way you behaved this year. You've not grown. Every single day, begin to work on yourself, begin to ask God. When you get angry and you say things, it's not because uh, God couldn't protect you. God wanted to reveal what yet is inside you that you need to address. And you, it's because they said this to me that I fled up. No, it was there. God is telling you, address this thing before this thing destroys you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? The moment you're born again, you need to be built up. The way you talk, your relationship with people, your worship, your prayer life must increase. Every single thing, you need to work on it. And how you do it is 
to be built up by the word of God. In Hebrews 13 verse 9, Hebrews 13 verse 9, don't be carried about with various trained doctrines. You know, uh, uh, somebody gave his life to Christ when I gave my life to Christ. It was my mate in school. He came to me one day and he showed me a book. When he showed me that book, I don't want to mention the name of the book. It, for me, it's a demonic book. It, it, they, there, are, there are books that the Bible omitted. Canticles. Book of Jasha. <laughs> They are the ones my friend wanted to read. Not the Bible. I said, sir, have you read the Bible first? He said, no, no, no. There are some that were omitted. Today he's not a Christian. The last I heard of him, he joined a church that is a cult. I don't want to mention the name of the church. I told him, God has saved me from some things. I don't want to go back into it. <laughs> I don't want to go back. See, if you've been part of a cult before, you will not want to be part of any, if God indeed has delivered you, you don't want to be part of anything that looks like that. So don't be carried about with various strange doctrines. Who is the wife of Cain? How did they, have, it's not your business. The ones revealed to you, focus on it. For it is good that the heart be established by grace. Be established. You see, you are sinking. Somebody else is sinking. You want to pull them. You will both go down. Stand first. Then you start asking questions that are intelligent. Your preoccupation should not be who is the wife of Cain. How does that affect your salvation? Are you following what I'm saying? There are people that read the Bible to argue. I told you, I finished preaching one day and I went greeting people and a pastor pulled me and said, you know the message you preach right now? I saw 10 messages that I will preach. There's nothing wrong with being inspired. I get inspired every day. But first of all, in jest, it's dangerous when you're a teacher. You are raising someone up. Tendencies are when you are listening to something, you are, you are writing notes to teach others. Meanwhile, you are just a signboard. You're on a spot. Pointing people to the kingdom, but you are not going there yourself. Like a conductor. Hey, go, hey, go, hey, go, hey, go. When they drop, <laughs> you go back to destination. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Don't be carried away by vain doctrine. Be, let your heart be established by grace. Not with food, which have not profited those who have occupied with them. Who have been occupied with them. Choose your meal del deliberately. I want to know this. I want to walk in this. This month, I'm studying this. This month, I'm, it's not everything. No, be focused because you're being built up. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? God will establish you in Jesus' precious name. In Colossians 2 and verse 6, Colossians 2 and verse 6, as you have therefore, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Verse 7, rooted and what? Built up. Don't stay there. Rooted, which means you will take root downwards. Ask any architect or civil engineer, how high a building will be, will be determined by the foundation. Don't be born again and receive ministry. God is telling you about ministry because he wants you to create the right foundation. I also was a Christian before, before we received Koza. So that God gives someone a ministry should not be strange to me, but the timing, timing, don't rush out. Don't rush out. Many years ago, a lady was chased out of her family house. So I told someone in Koza to take her in. So we started questioning her, why were you chased out? Oh, she was pregnant. So I told a student, a medical student, to house her in. So in her house, in the house of a student, she gave birth to her child. So when she gave birth to the child, we went back to the family, we begged, we, we spoke to the father, and they received her back. Not barely six months after, she came to me and said, she has a ministry. 
Be careful if you are gifted. Oh, that lady was gifted. But you can't give all you don't have. You just came out of something. Be rooted, be built up. No. She said, she said to me, Pastor Biodu, you don't leave what you preach. Every single day you preach that people should, should, should fulfill their dreams. I want to fulfill my dreams now, right now. You are saying no. I said, no, it's not like that. I explained to her until I knew that uh, she wouldn't listen to the explanation. So I told her to go and do what she wanted to do. I would have thought today we will see worldwide ministry today. We don't hear about her. Because if you're not built up, if you're not rooted, you can be built up. And it takes time to be rooted. Let me tell you something. There is nothing a branch does than to stay in the vine. Supply will come. Fruits does not appear on the tree, on the, on the trunk. It appears on the branches. Everything that God has placed on your inside, just stay, abide, stay in the Word, stay in prayer. You'll be shocked what will come out of you. I pray in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not bounce you off. Can that amen be solid? In the name of Jesus, allow me to just show a scripture to you. Jude 1.20 And you, beloved, or brethren, building yourself on your most holy faith. How do we do it? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So the first thing is the word of grace is able to build you up. We eat to grow. The next thing is not just prayer. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You are being built up. Is the Greek word oikodobio. You are being built up. The next time you want to pray in tongues, just tell yourself, <laughs> um, see, it's not something somebody will do for you. Some people think when they sit on pastor's chair, they will grow up. Some people think when they rub their body on pastor's car, they will have it. No. <laughs> he didn't have that stuff by rubbing his body on someone's car. He was built up. You lock your door and say, in the next one hour, I'm not coming out. And I will not die. And next month, you make it one hour, 20 minutes. Next month or two months after, you make it one hour, 30 minutes. That's how to grow up. That's how to build up. If you notice this, he said, beloved, building yourself. It didn't say go to a pastor. Now it's good to belong to a church. Don't forsake the assemblies of ourselves together as a manner of some is. But after receiving the word in church, as you are driving, don't talk. Be speaking in tongues. And tell yourself, I'm just... Some people think the Holy Ghost is an errand boy. Uh, go there. Get this from me. No. <laughs> the major thing is downloading. You download wisdom. It tells you what to do. The Bible says in Ephesians, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. Quickly. The Bible says, But God has revealed them to us. Through what? Is spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Do you know the meaning of all things? Including relationships, including that, your, the thing you need to do in your career. They posted it to a, a, a barren place. The Holy Spirit knows what you ought to do. You are downloading. You are, knowing, you are, you are, you are downloading what to do. Because it teaches to profit. Who can teach like him? Somebody say growth. Somebody say being built up. That is your job. We take authority over the enemy, but don't focus on the devil. If you are being built up, you'll be shocked that you are both. You know how uh, the ego deal with birds that try to attack it? There's a bird. I've forgotten the name. It, once he sees the ego, he attacks the ego. Particularly if he sees a prey. Once the ego fly on its level, I say it's a crow or something, he attacks it. You know what the ego does? The ego flies high. The thing, the bird tries to fly where the ego, ego flies. He hyperventilates. He loses his brain. <laughs> he falls down. Don't fight. Just go. Just fly high. You'll be shocked that the things at the level of crabs will never come near you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that this word you've heard, you'll not just hear it in vain. In the name of Jesus, you will profit out of it. Your prophecy will appear unto all. So shall it be. 
In Jesus' name. Now lift up your hands and give thanks. Give thanks for your growth ahead of time. Give thanks that your ear can hear this, that your eyes can see this. Early in the morning, setting the tone for your week, decree and declare that everything that wants you to be on a spot, address it right now. Growth is your portion. In Jesus' precious name.